Hello, everybody. It's Carleon Jones here with episode seven of Friday Night Financial Fix. Tonight's topic is how to build residual income. My opinion on this topic is the best way to build residual income is to discover all different platforms that offer a system to where you can build residual income off of it. Find the best one that fits your personality or your structure of carrying out tasks and apply it to your full ability to where you consistently will always have money flowing in. Um, a lot of people scare away from this concept because they don't know the true meaning of residual. People shy away from things that they don't seem to really know. Um, when you take the time out and really research and find out what residual income is and how you can apply it to your day-to-day -day life, because it's still people who work nine to five jobs who set up residual income systems before they quit their jobs. Then you have other people like in my state who just decided that this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm sticking to. I'm focusing on this and build up multiple streams of residual income along the way to be able to put yourself in a position to where you control and set up your own uh, retirement plan at the end of the day. Um, and what's going on, Calvin, man? I see you jumped in. You, you joined me, man. If you, if you, if you want to, man, you can jump on there and take a seat, man. I just started recording, bro. If you want to jump in, take a seat. But um, oh, you still on Hangout? Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I I jumped out, man. I had to at least get this started up and running. But yeah, there's a lot of good things on a Hangout, bro. I'm about to stop recording right now. Uh, right now, just different platforms of how to create residual income and people figuring out which one is the best uh, system for themselves. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's a is one of my <laughs> one of the people that look I look up to says there's a million ways to make a million dollars um, and passive income uh, can be so simple. Uh, I think people overcomplicate it a lot. Um, there are two things that are going on. I think people, number one, don't don't have enough awareness that it's possible, you know, um, for whatever reason, they're, they're stuck in a mode that says job equals income, right? And they haven't been able to break out of that mode, you know, as, but as soon as um, enough information comes by them enough times, um, then they begin, the light bulb comes on and they say, hey, you know what, maybe it's possible. The other thing is the more successful we are at earning passive income and showing results, the more um, people will believe that it's possible. So I think um, part of the big story is, uh, number one, having an audience that amplifies the voice for building residual income, number one amplifying the, the voice for that and increasing awareness. Then number two, people actually um, jumping into projects and helping each other to gain result. So, and it's so much easier, easier when you jump into a project with other people that are at least on the same path. Some may be a little further along the path than you are, but it's so much easier to um, have a good result and a favorable outcome uh, when you're working with other people than it is you banging your head up against the wall or against your computer uh, trying to figure everything out by yourself. Would you agree, Carly? I fully agree. I fully agree. Yeah. I went through the complication. Uh, I wish I could show you a stack of laptops I've been through, beat myself over the head trying to figure out everything out by myself. So, yeah, that's that's a great step right there. Um, awesome. Uh, what's your opinion on like people just 
going with the first thing that they that they find out online to create some type of income online what's your opinion on that um what i would suggest for anyone who's seeking to build um residual income is to um is is to do a little google search do a little youtube search um <laughs> you know do a little facebook search i would use the internet to find out who are the names and the faces that you see most commonly most frequently mm -hmm. on any given you know on a given subject so for example if you were writing about or if you were interested in creating lifestyle freedom right you you want to create lifestyle freedom so um put that in a google search put those three words in google and see what names what faces come up right so you put go to google put in create lifestyle freedom because that's something that you're interested in doing and come up with you know see who comes up most frequently and then then start to follow those people who you see associated with that search you just did do the same thing on YouTube. Put type, go to YouTube, type in create lifestyle freedom and do a YouTube search. Um, so another example would be, uh, let's just say um, uh, building a network because, um, you know, like I just said, it's kind of difficult for you to get all of the pieces in sync if you're trying to do things on your own and you're just starting out. So look up maybe something like Global Wealth Networks, you know, do a search on Google for that phrase, Global Wealth Networks. How do I um, get into a network of people that are interested in building global wealth online? How do I get into a network of people that are interested in building income wealth online so let me type in global wealth networks on google and let's just see what faces come up let's see what names come up frequently under that search so my advice for anyone who is um seeking to uh establish residual income that's the topic of our subject tonight uh a topic of our talk tonight that they first do some research and um, and look at the people that are associated, you know, with that subject, and then begin following them, as opposed to just jumping in. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that if you can align yourself with a mastermind group that is at least having a conversation about building residual income, it's much better than you as an individual with no reference, no experience, just jumping into the first thing you see. So that would be my second piece of advice. Find masterminds on Facebook. Facebook is loaded with communities and groups. Find masterminds on Google Plus, enter into a mastermind and start having discussions, enter into the conversation with other people that are, that are uh, wanting to build residual income and see what that mastermind is doing. What do you think? That sounds like a great idea. Um, beyond the research, once uh, someone figures out everything that they need to do, how do they go about um, drawing more attention to all their leads? Wow. Um, in my opinion, the, the um, best way to do that is to use online tools to leverage your time the best way to draw people to you is to use online tools and systems to leverage your time because there's a heck of a lot more people that that are in the world than time that you have in any given day to reach them all <laughs> so you've got to have some kind of tool and system both tools and systems to be able to attract people to um, the project or the offer that you have, that's the best way. You've got to leverage. Um, 
so with with regards to tools, you're you're going to want to have tools that take your idea, your talent, your project, whatever that is, and allow you to uh, develop that into content that you can place online in front of your target audience. You've got to have a tool to do that. My the people that I run with um, have four to five tools in their in their treasure chest that they use to help attract people to their project. And they have these all the time. They're always using these. One is a blog. And so that's an excellent tool to uh, help you, number one, establish a brand for whatever your idea or your project is. And number two, to uh, reach a larger audience because your blog is your permanent piece of internet real estate, right? It's your piece of internet real estate. You own that and you can dress it up with uh, any video, any article, any podcast that you want to get your message across. And instead of you going out and trying to individually find people, you can share links for your blog in certain places and have people find you. You can write about certain topics that people are searching for online anyway. And they are drawn to your blog. So blog is one of the four or five tools. Another one is landing pages, right? You've got to have some kind of design tool that will help to develop your idea on a page so that people are attracted to that idea. Number three, um, you've, my people that, that I work with that do very well online, they have what's called a lead capture tool. They have a design tool that allows them to build a page. And you you and I have been on these pages a hundred times. We probably see them every day. Um, they, they, uh, these pages are designed to uh, share an idea and extend an offer for a free ebook, for a special report, for a video series about something that you're interested in. In this case, it would be how to build residual income, you know, and in, in you and they're offering that in exchange for you giving your name and your email address so that they can follow up with more of the information that you're interested in. So being able to build custom capture pages that not only attract, but capture um, the contact information of the people that you're trying to reach, you know, it's another, those are just three tools. I don't, you know, uh, you asked the question, I just wanted to share with you what I and the people that I'm associated with are using to attract more folk um, and leverage our time. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. After you you build up all these leads, what's the best way to build relationships with those leads, with these people? With, who, with your lead list. Or you're hammering. <laughs> I got on here and you're hammering. But that's okay. These are all excellent questions. Um, so once you have people on a lead list, what's the best way or what's the next step? Well, you got them on your list because they were interested in um, in a subject. That's how they got on your list. They they opted in saying, hey, you know what? I'm interested in how to build residual income. That's the title of our subject today. And so now that they're on that list, you know, you have to have an email. Well, you should have an email autoresponder that allows you to develop um, a personal relationship with them, number one, so that they are so that you develop what's called no like and trust with these leads because you don't know them from Adam's house cat. You want to have a, a system that leverages your time, gives them the information that they want and more of it. Right. Um, wh while uh, all on while all on automatic pilot. So you want to you want to uh, deepen the relationship increase the no like and trust, deliver what you promised, that's information on how that person can do X, Y, Z, 
and ultimately lead them up to, you know, asking them specific questions for what's going to make the, the most impact, what's their next step? What is it that they want to do next? What is it they're trying to accomplish next? And you have to find out what it is uh, they want because that's why they're there. We're here to help solve a problem, overcome a challenge, accelerate a person to a result. When we can do any one of those things, solve a problem, overcome a challenge, or accelerate a person along their path to the next result, then it's win-win. We win and they win. Does that make sense? That makes a whole lot of sense. Excellent, man. Right on top of the questions. I ain't going to keep hammering you away right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. I just, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I throw them at you while I had the chance. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I see some other great people in the audience. Uh, looks like Mr. Zach Shahid is here. Let me duck out. Um, thank you so much for having me. And again, success to you. I really appreciate you sharing um, this this line of, of of subject. It's it's where we need to be. We need to be elevating our conversations. You know and. Um, figuring out how we can move from job-based income to project-based income, how we can move to a more elevated uh, level of lifestyle, of living and enjoying. So hats off to you, Carly. On thumbs up, man. You're doing a great job. Really Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you for joining. Have a good night. You too. Yes, sir. Any Anybody else want to want to jump into the hot seat? Want to want to express their opinions on any of these questions nobody oh man well i'm i'm gonna stop still confused about money you are still confused about money so here's the thing right you know most people look at online opportunities network marketing affiliate marketing they will look at it and say it's a scam only because they don't have a higher level of understanding so that's where Mahdi was talking about. We have to have different conversations, right? So most people growing up, all they hear is go to school, get a good education to get a good job, okay? In the school system, they are teaching them how to become great employees and not a great business owner. So when you start to talk to somebody about residual income, it's really a shift in their paradigm because they have no clue what residual income is, how to generate it, because all their life they have been taught how to go create, you know, um, income that's not leveraged, you know, meaning they have to go trade time for dollars. So mm -hmm. that's the majority of the people. That's how they think. So when you start talking about residual income, it's a change in the mindset. So anybody that says residual income and the ways you can create it is a scam, they're only saying that because they're telling you what they've been taught through the years, which is their opinion, but it's not fact. Because the fact of the matter is, if they knew about residual income, they would do whatever it took in their power every single day to go get them some. I mean, if you if you look, Carly, on at the wealthiest people in this world, okay, they all have seven streams of income, which I guarantee you, if they have seven streams of income, five out of those seven will be residual, meaning they do not have to physically be there to create the income that's leveraging their time. You know, one thing I want to recommend for anybody that's watching this live or the recording is make sure you go read Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Quadrant. Yeah. If you have not read that book, it will break down for you the four ways legally to make money and how Mr. Kiyosaki says you need to generate leveraged income and leveraged income is income where you make money when you sleep. <laughs> OK, so this conversation about residual income needs to be taught more. You know, um, it's just not taught from day one in our school system. Like I said earlier, they're just taught to go be great employees. And the crazy thing about it is you being a great employee is building residual income for that business owner. Exactly. So that business owner is leveraging you to create his financial success. But it's like, what are you doing for yourself to generate that same level of success for yourself and create residual income for yourself? People are not. They're not doing that. So that's why 
we have to step up these levels of conversations and get them into masterminds and you know get them some, around some other mentors who can teach them the same things we're being taught, Colleen, because people are not, they have no clue. Exactly. No clue. And I'm glad you just said that too about the the building the residual income for the boss, working on the jobs. I, I had a couple of conversations with Calvin about that and my concept on it. And he actually pointed out what I was thinking, how people also in consistency, not just with the scam, but uh, thinking as it uh, of, the whole platform is being a pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your what's your concept on other of jobs being a pyramid scheme? Also, it's the greatest pyramid scheme ever. <laughs> I mean, exactly. again, it goes back to mindset, right? So let me just say this for the people that's watching this recording, okay? If you have a job right now and that's your career, you got a career that you quote unquote love. I mean, it's okay. It's okay to love what you do. But my first question I always ask people is if they stop paying you tomorrow, are you going to show up? Exactly. And if the answer is no, that means you really don't love it. You just like it a lot. <laughs> OK. And when it comes to this whole pyramid concept, the world is set up as a pyramid. Everything you look is a pyramid, except with network marketing, affiliate marketing. It's what I call an inverted pyramid. It means it's, it's upside down. The reason why I say that is because Carleon, if, if I'm in a network marketing company and I sponsor you, I sponsor Calvin, if you guys do more work than me, you will get paid more than me. Now, I may get a percentage because I brought you guys onto the team, but where else in the world can I help somebody make a million dollars? I make $20,000. Where else can you do that? Exactly. It's not a bad thing. If I help you make a lot of money and I get me a little percentage for making you a lot of money, that's not a bad thing. Whereas in corporate America, the pyramid is the person on top makes all the money. So the employees will never make as much money as the manager. The manager will ne never make as much money as a general manager. The general manager will never make as much money as the VP. And the VP is never going to make as much money as the CEO. But the bottom line is who does the majority of the work? The employees. employees. So that's a true pyramid where the people at the bottom are doing the most work but they're getting paid less money. But again, Carleon, you get people that are stuck in this corporate mindset. They were taught all their life only to be an employee. So I, ha I had this conversation about a year ago with one of my frat brothers and we got in a heated conversation. And he said, well, Zach, that's just the corporate structure. And I had to tell him, I said, it, don't, it doesn't matter what you call it. I'm a common sense type guy. It's a pyramid. If I do all the work and you get paid the most money, it's a pyramid. Whereas in network marketing, if I sign up 20 people today, whoever does the most work, get paid the most money. It just so happened if I'm your sponsor, I will get a little kickback. Yes. But again, if I make if I help somebody make one hundred thousand and I make fifteen thousand, will that person that made one hundred thousand be mad at me? Absolutely not. Exactly. So this whole concept, this mindset, see, people say Muhammad has taught me something a long time ago. Mr. Mahdi says that if you get enough people saying a thing, saying the thing, regardless if it's right or wrong, you know, people are starting to believe it. So exactly. enough people have said in their head, oh, it's just a corporate structure. It's supposed to be that way. Really? Is it really supposed to be that way? <laughs> you know, so it's just they've been taught all their lives this one mentality when it's a whole nother concept that can talk. Man, the crazy thing is, Carlo, here's a crazy thing. <laughs> okay. I'm in a fraternity, right? And I have my fraternity is huge. This is this this is what just befuddles me. If all of if my chapter, if just my chapter, not even my whole fraternity, if my chapter at Fort Valley, if my whole chapter got started into my network marketing company, all of our families will be wealthy for the rest of our life. That's how crazy it is. Yeah. But since some people's mentality is, oh, I have to have a job to create income. Oh, I don't want to be involved in a pyramid scheme where they're already in one in the corporate structure. They don't see that. But that's where the mindset goes back to everything is not for everybody. Everybody's not going to see your vision. You know, if, if God gave them your vision, they will be on that same path as you. Some people are just not going to see it. So, you know, we need to have more conversations like this to kind of wake people up. 
Yeah. But we got to realize that some people are just so conditioned to be stuck in their ways of 40 hours for 40 years. That's just going to be them. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. that doesn't have to be the rest of us. That's that's sad because, like, I, I realized when I talk to a lot of people, man, like, I talked to my one cousin about it one day. He was trying to set up a website for something. And mm -hmm. I told him I, I'd do it for him. But, like, what he thought about, like, creating a, a true brand for himself off of this website and learning how to make money off of getting that website and showing other people how to get website at cheaper rates. And he was like, oh man, that sounds too hard. Like, dude, you work in a factory with different foreign chemicals where if your mask slip off at the wrong time, you might sure. get, you might kill yourself. That's not hard. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, right. like, that's risking your life. Worst thing I might do is get a cramp on my hand from typing too much in one day. Like, mm -hmm. dude, like, is and plus I I can choose where I want to work at, wherever I want to be at work, and I I can work there as long as I got Wi-Fi connection and my laptop. Sometimes even just my phone, I can do just little things towards building up a presence towards what I'm putting out there into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, it's it's not that hard. And like for two, like I even tell certain people, like certain people, they don't feel like they can talk to people. And like, honestly, man, it took me a minute to get into the phase of like pit myself on camera and getting into the motion of doing it. And I was like, all right, well, if that ain't for you, I know other ways that you can make money without having to do that too. They mm -hmm. be like, oh man, I still might have to spend too much time doing it and this, that, and the third. And I was like, you know what? Don't even worry about it, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I, I had to come to the realization that being an entrepreneur ain't for everybody. Like, um, I seen a post not too long ago where it's talking about like, um, people misconceived the uh, the word hustler with you know, drug dealer and all that. That's that's not a real hustler because they got their mind frame stuck in one position. Still, you still revolving your income around one system instead mm -hmm. of multiple systems. A real hustler devises multiple systems of creating money for himself. Absolutely. That's that's why I, I I understood and started researching so many other things before I dove into a certain system to brand myself because that you 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 got to do research, man, and and figure these things out other than listening to media. Mm -hmm. Media is deteriorating mm -hmm. our peoples and their brains, man. I swear. <laughs> and then, you know, you say something about about time too. What really gets me is when people say I don't have enough time to mm -hmm. to build that or to invest in that, but they are wasting time every single day. I mean, if, if you have to go somewhere to produce income, eight to 10 hours to the, every day, every single day, building somebody else's legacy, somebody else's dream, you're going you're gonna to spend time regardless. So my thing is, if you're going to build somebody else's dream during the day, what are you going to do for your dream when you get off? I mean, you want to spend that time somewhere anyway. So you need to spend some of that time investing in yourself building your skills so you can leave a legacy you know for your children's children's children exactly. i mean but again man it, it goes back to mindset Carlon. you gotta have the right mindset man luckily i just been blessed to have some great mentors um one of them my dad starting me off has always told me you gotta have a business point blank period you know so I, i've been blessed with that man and give me some other mentors to kind of guide me in the right direction and then getting these masterminds it's all mindset, man. You, you got to get around like minded people that have set the same similar goals and attainments you're trying to achieve so you can make it happen. So because if not, you're going to be stuck in a rut with the rest of these people talking about everything's a scam when they're part of the biggest scam <laughs> ever. And just don't know it. ever. Just don't know it. Mm -hmm. Like I even was talking to one of my cousins about like how taxes and work and everything. And like for real, the, the, the main reason why I came up with the topic for this uh, subject with Friday Night Financial Fix was I was I was thinking of something that I could do to draw people in that had great understanding of things that I knew and things that I didn't know so I can get a better understanding to make me a better businessman and to also start implementing and teaching this stuff to my kids. Because mm -hmm. my kids are on the verge of about to be teenagers and like every time I'm around and they always ask me questions about this and about that, I, I need to be able to present these things to them in the right way but um uh just researching 
and and like analyzing myself, I started realizing that I didn't want to be another statistic, man. That's right. what that's what that's what really got me into everything that how I how I start diving head first into creating myself into a better entrepreneur and to hirely personal develop to actually start being able to talk to people and draw people into the things that I'm interested in and showing them how they can take their own interests and turn it into a platform to start creating residual income off of it. Cause see a lot of people look at it and they don't understand the fact that the matter is you are your residual income. What you do and how you give yourself out to the universe is how you going to revolve your own income system. Mm -hmm. That mind state of, well, this is what I was taught. This is what I know so far. So this is what I'm going to use to make money for this man and get crumbs out of it to just barely get by. This is the system I'm stuck in, and this is just what I'm going to stick to. Man, I, I every time I look at like my older cousins and everybody else that I grew up with, and I be looking like, like man, I'm I, I I'm breaking this chain, bro. Like <laughs> literally, it's it's gonna start right here, right now. I'm breaking it right now. When my kids get my age, matter of fact, when my kids turn 13, when they both turn teenagers, it's gonna be a complete opposite. They gonna have financial understanding. They gonna know about banks. And like, I don't know if you've seen it, man. I'm going to have to find this link for you and probably uh, message it to you. Uh, it's this 12-year-old girl. She probably like 15 years old now. It was back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And Canada, man, this 12-year-old girl knew the bank system like the back of her hand. And basically, he came up with a concept of how you can fix the bank system to where everybody wouldn't be in debt. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, that this little girl is so intelligent. Then like... um. Last week, I had a conversation with a young uh, brother, uh, Cameron. He's into day trading. He sent me this video of this 10-year-old boy who's uh, in stock trading right now. Mm -hmm. His mind state on financial structure at 10 years old is so sweet that by the time he's 15 years old, he'll be worth at least like 100000 at 15 years old mm -hmm. just off of how he's making trades right now. He took a, what? an initial $250 uh, investment and turned it into, I think it was like four, almost $4,000, like $3,800 change by the time, uh, like eight months later, just off of mm -hmm. like following uh, guidance from his grandfather and one of his grandfather's friends and just making the trades in, in proper timing and staying up on it and just reading books and researching at 10 years old. I was like, man, if, if we'd have had that structure when we was kids, it, it wouldn't be so hard to get everybody else around us to understand these things. Exactly. Everybody be on the same page. But, you know, that's why we here. I, I, I seen this one quote, man, that entrepreneurs uh, is it, up to us to save the world, man. We, we, the, we the new superheroes, man. We got to We got to change everything. That's it's it. Up man. To, us to change the world, man. That's it. That's it. I want my son, man, you know, when he's four now, but. I want him, you know, when he gets to a certain age, he's not gonna have to worry about going trade time for dollars. You know, he's gonna already be set up. So you're right, man. That's, that's what we here for, man. Trying to change these conversations, change the mindset, man, and um, you know, just make it happen. Exactly, man. Got it, gotta change our lives, man. And we gotta start with our own futures, man. And our futures is our kids. But I also mm -hmm. do it for my nieces, my nephews, my little cousins that wanna listen. It's like my right. one little cousin, he just graduated from college, got his bachelor's degree, and he listened. Like he and he just be messaging me back and forth on Facebook, just trying to get a better understanding of everything. But yeah, like he he stay up on it. Certain people that act like they really want to learn how to better themselves and create their own jobs aside from doing these little petty jobs, man, to get these little pennies. Mm -hmm. it, it's pointless. And then like another note, I don't I don't like initially tell people like, man, quit your job. Cause that's, that's not how you do it. If, right. if you're not fully mentally prepared to just like jump full fledge into it, start taking your little savings money, that little money that you just spent to go to Vegas. Cause you got two weeks vacation from your job. You could have took that money and found some other circuits. Like I've been talking to my cousin, like I haven't did it yet, but I've been researching it on the, uh, the online travel agent and how you can make money off of your own travels. 
everything. Mm-hmm. My cousin, and they go to Vegas. They go come down here to Atlanta. They go all these different places, New York, everywhere, all the time. And the only thing that they consistently using is like, all right, I, I give them, I commend them. They use Groupon and they get little discounts. But I was like, dude, if you know all the traveling you've been doing, like I can't show you nothing physically because I haven't been doing it, but I've been researching it for a year and a half now. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's a lot of people out there making decent income off of their travels and showing other people how to travel the same way. Like, dude, that's your first step right there. As much money as you have spent on traveling from your job, every time you go on vacation, you could have been getting paid for that. Exactly. Instead of from just spending money to go and spending money while you're there and ain't got nothing to really show for it other than a couple Instagram pictures. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, man. Like, but I, I'm just in the position right now to I'm I'm analyzing everything because in the next year I already got it written down. And the next year I'm about to start doing a lot of traveling. So I'm about to dive head first into that online uh agency. Amen. Travel agency, man. Cause that's that's the that's why I really started researching it. Cause I knew I wanted to start traveling when I really, really got dove deep into my business. And that's another reason why I chose to work for myself. Aside hey. from getting a job, absolutely, and you know why you you know why you interested? That's one thing I do. <laughs> I am one of the online travel agents, so you know you let me know. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. Believe me, that's why I make sure I, I we that's why I make sure we rub shoulders as much as possible. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Believe me, I looked through your site a few times. I looked through <laughs> everything. But so, I, man, always, that that brings I'm me always, to another point, real quick, is that your network, man. Is your net worth so like exactly when we're building these global wealth networks man it's like anybody in your network you should be able to go to and find a product and service that you can use and stay inside your network you know right. that's how you generate income for your network and it's it's helping create residual income for your network because if you know in your network your people in your network are, we're gonna they're gonna come to you for a product or service then that's only going residual income in itself Exactly. So it's always good, man. You know, your, your network is your net worth. That's, that's so true. That's so true. And even like I found other ways, like uh, now I just figured out a way to also get paid a percentage of the money back from uh when I spend money, like essentially like paying bills and so on and so forth. Yep. I, I, I found out about crowdfunding and was so beautiful about the crowdfunding system that I found. Like, if say like I spend an average of three hundred and fifty dollars in a month, mm-hmm. and I I invite I get twelve referrals before I I my whole thirty day pass I get twelve referrals. That three hundred and fifty dollars can and those twelve referrals refer at least three people a piece, and they using that crowdfunding card basically just to pay their bills and so on and so forth. That three hundred fifty dollars I just spent that month can increment up to almost seven hundred bucks in crowdfunding money back. Mm. And even if I don't refer nobody and I spend three hundred and fifty dollars on my card, say I have no referrals, I spend three fifty on the card, they still gonna give me back at the end of the month like a dollar and seventy three cent, and that just builds up month after month after month. On top of you add more people to the system, and what make it even more sweeter is. You can't just tell somebody like, yeah, man, it's such and such crowdfunding company. No, they got to have a referral link to get even into the system. It won't even let you get the card without being referred by somebody. Mm. So they basically put a gridlock on that because I know a lot of people that get into other systems. But yeah, I didn't start making money off of that and other prepaid cards too, man, just by referring people to them and a lot of people be pressed on the prepaid cards because some of them now they give you early direct deposits. I was loving it for a minute because as long as they know the money coming, you get your money two days early. Who who not going to want to get their money two days early? When the holidays come, if it's a holiday during the time period when that money's supposed to come, like say like uh, you get paid that Friday and that Thursday holiday, you're going to get mm-hmm. your money Monday. I was like, yeah, who not going to do this man who 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 not gonna want to deal with this and plus it's a it's a great way to divide your uh income too that's why i only make sure my bank account get a certain amount of money and certain and i had the the reason why i really started doing that was because i i i got caught up into 
not really paying attention to when certain bills are supposed to be paid because I had them all automated. Mm -hmm. And if the money ain't there, you're going to overdraft your account. If this card right here is precisely set for when I'm writing everything down and I already, this, this car right here is to pay this bill. This car is to pay this bill. This money comes out of my bank account. This way I can take this money. Soon as I get it, put it on them cards, leave them cards alone and them cards pay off those bills. So on and so forth. And this bank account is still secure and I don't have to worry about killing my account. Cause that's when I start really start realizing the reason why, I do things like that because I didn't have a great financial structure growing up. Mm. And it's a dang shame it took for me to 30 some odd years to figure it out. But yeah, like, and it, it really started hitting me when, like I said, with my kids, man, they start asking questions about money and this, that, and the third. And I was like, they, they actually this summer asked me a question and I was like, I don't know. Like, mm. I really was like, I don't know. And my kids is 11 and 10. And it was like, they 11 and 10. And math is my favorite subject. It always has been. I love numbers, but I don't know the answer to this question. They basically asked me, um, uh, why do certain people um, are scared of, of fi the financial structure when it comes to like getting a house, coming to buy a house and everything? I didn't know. I couldn't explain it to them. And I watched my grandmother lose houses and I didn't really understand at the time up until for a long time of why she lost these houses and how the process happened when I knew she had money to get these houses. I never knew. And then when my kids just asked me, I couldn't answer the question. So mm -hmm. that, that leads me back to why another reason why I started this Friday night financial fix, just so I can start meeting the right people. Something told me just being a, a I, I studied psychology for a year and a half. And certain words, you pin it out into the online market, certain colors draws attention to certain types of people. And Friday Night Financial Fix, I already knew, like, man, somebody going to jump on here and try to correct me if I'm wrong about mm -hmm. something, because that's how people work. Man, I've met mortgage lenders since I've been doing this. People who've been working in the stock market for 20 years, people who's been working in the stock market for just a few years um people who just recently graduated uh with masters and bachelor degrees in financing people who on own non organizations for things that i'm trying to do which is like basically my overall goal is teaching our our youth uh financial structure of, across the at least across the nation if not the globe you know what i'm saying but starting to get rub shoulders with a lot of people that's why evan i, I follow evan heavily lately i follow him a lot i've been i even made it to a couple of early morning blabs which i need sleep man I yeah need sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you notice like when you jump on facebook early in the morning i don't i don't i be up still like i don't sleep i, right. I really don't i probably get like two hours of sleep a day and my my engine automatically be like man i need to do something i'm telling you but look man sleep is for suckers man you don't need sleep <laughs> exactly man it, it, hey they they call me Mr. No Sleep. <laughs> I'm always online, and when I'm not online on the computer, I'm on my tablet or on my phone. Like man, I'm I'm always trying to present something to the world just to let people know. Like, look, man, incorporate yourself with me, learn these things, and start applying it to your community. Like I've been having a lot of conversations with people in different places in South Africa. I just talked to this one uh brother in uh, Ghana today about um the the housing and the land rates in, in ghana and how they been had uh land set up for people over here the uh in the quote-unquote african-american community I mean, forget my quotation <laughs> quote-unquote african-american community over here and how it's been set up like that since like 2002 for us to start buying land aside from paying property taxes and being caught up in mortgages and everything here in this country they they been had stuff set up for people to start buying their own land and not having to worry about paying taxes. Mm. Yeah, that's another thing I, I I learned to start like drifting away from. I just uh talked to this one brother, but I my me and my brother been talking about it heavily. But um, I watched this one brother's video where he owns three businesses here in the country in uh Philadelphia area, and he doesn't have to pay taxes, and it's 
actually not even in the constitution that by legal right we're supposed to pay con uh taxes it's not a law see a lot of people how they manipulate is is a let me let me start recording right now <laughs>